Right, so here I am back with part two. Um, as you can see, I've finished all four cards and I've made envelopes um, for, for three of them. I'm going to show you how I made the fourth envelope and then I'm going to show you how I make the box. This is it for the original. I'm going to do it in these colours. Um, for the envelopes, um, you can use, um, for this size, I use the envelope punch board and the cards, if you look down here, it tells you the size of the card and the cards are uh, three by four. So that means you need a piece of paper that's six by six. Um, and this makes um, envelopes really, really um, easy. Um, so what I used was a retired uh, piece of paper. Um, uh, this was from Celebration a couple of years ago. Um, so it's a good way of using up um, old paper. So a 12 by 12 cut down to four six by sixes. So I got all four envelopes out of one piece. My other idea was to use a 12 by 12 vanilla, uh, very vanilla, which would have been um, okay as well. Um, we also sell envelope paper that you can use. So this is thicker than envelope paper, but um, it's uh, it does the job. So you, if you've never used an envelope punch board before, um, what you need to do on your three by three, three by four um, card size, so the paper size six by six, and it tells you there that you your first score line is going to be at two and five eighths. So it couldn't be simpler. You've got the measurements along there. So you put your piece of paper there until it reaches two and five eighths. Um, it comes with a score tool. Um, and so what you've just got to remember is it's it's punch and score. Punch, score. And then after that, you just line it up with this little tail. And remember to do punch and score. Punch and score. punch and score and then the other side of this punch is a corner rounder so you only need to do the top and the bottom because you don't see these two edges because they get stuck down <clears throat> I just clear my throat sorry I realized when I was doing the video um, when I watched it back for making the cards um, I was I was quite quiet I've been a little bit tired and um, after a, a long weekend away for the bank holiday, I've never really quite recovered, so I was really, really tired. So I just apologise for um, my little bit of a mumbly. Try not to mumble today. So then, just a matter of giving the edges a, a, a nice crease, and then that fits your card. Just perfectly. So all you need to do is, I'll use this the right way up this time, just a little bit along each of those diagonals. Stick it up and there's your envelope. I know there's no sticky there. You can, I usually leave it as it is and people put their own bit of glue in. Or you could use a bit of tear and tape so that it's it's on there and then when they use it they just tear it off so that's the envelope <clears throat> now to make the box i use the envelope punch board um, as well as you can see that's like an envelope opening um, but i just gave it a little bit of a an edge so i went to the same size um, measurements looking at it and i just added an inch so this is seven by seven and i'm going to start my first score in the same place of two and five eighths. So punch and score. But in order to have the little edge, I'm going to move it an inch. So I'm going to go to three and five eighths and punch and score again. So then that gives me two scored edges. And then you just carry on as before punch and score. Oop. Punch and score twice on each side. 
so that you then get the edges of your box. Now depending on how deep you want your box, you would make your piece of paper um, bigger accordingly and move it along um, accordingly in that, that, that way. Um, now again, I just want to corner around the top and the bottom. So we stick that in there. That one in there. Oh, can you hear the cats? Oh my God, it's like a scene out of the Aristocats. They're all caterwauling. Right, so what I did was I then decorated the box for this one. Um, I used um, touches of texture, so I used the, the flower and the splodges. I'm going to do this a little bit differently because um, I thought this one could maybe be given to a man, maybe. Who knows? Right, so I'm going to use these two again from um, touches of texture. So I've got the, the scatter splodges and then these are like a collection of letters. Um, so I'm going to do the... Um, collection of letters in Island Indigo and I'm going to do the splodges in Mint Macaron so ink those up because it's a little one actually I could probably put the stamp to the thing so then this is just random stamping there's something what's under there ah it's all them bits I'll do it that way because actually I'm not convinced. Just give it a bit of a pattern. All over. This should be quicker with a proper sized ink pad, which I will order, promise. And then I think I'm going to do another one there. And I'll splodge there. There we go. And then in Mint macaron, I'm just going to, this will be tone on tone, and then this is just splodged like so. Just to give it a little bit of colour, interest. perfect come on let's face it I'm doing it it's not going to be perfect is it I don't strive for perfection there we go right. you can do this before you use the envelope punch board there we go now I can just see bit there and a bit over there oh look do it in the air there we go so that's that done and then once we've got the ink out I'm going to do the belly band now the belly band is the width of A4 cut at two inches okay and I am gonna carry on and use these sponges just splodge. When I first did it, I did this belly band um, in the same colour as this, but it kind of got lost. And then the sentiment got lost because you couldn't see it because it was too much tone on tone. So I put this in to sort of break it up and it also um, marries with the, the cards on the inside that have got a bit of 
very vanilla as well. So I quite liked it. There we go. So that's that. Oh, a bit there, but I haven't really done. There we go. So that's going to be our little belly band. And then I've already stamped the, the, the sentiment. What I've used is the, the, the Just For You, um, which I then use the matching thinlet to cut it out. You might notice that the thinlet is a bit smaller. So when you actually stamp it, it stamps like so. But when you cut it out, you only cut out that little bit and you leave that behind. Um, so you could layer it. So I could have stamped it again, layered it and did it that way. But I decided that I quite liked it like that. And because that might get a little bit lost, I've used the second largest um, stitched uh, framelit die, which I'm going to put under like so. And I've stamped that in, in Island Indigo. I quite liked that contrast. Okay, so I did that um, all off camera because you don't need to see me doing that because the important thing here is how I made the box. Okay, so move those out of the way. So you just fold and burnish all the school lines. Am I ski with? Is this annoying? Because it's a bit ski with. It is a little bit annoying. Well, if you're OCD, it's a bit annoying. There we go. So that's those. So then just a little bit of snipping. So these are going to turn into flaps. So we just snip up there. Snip up there. Am I off camera? Probably. Snip up there. And snip up there. And then what we're going to do is stick just one side down, so I decide which way up, I'll have it that way. So we need to put glue on these two flaps. I'm going to use Tombow for this because snail wouldn't be good enough and I haven't had my training in for us views. Going on a Poodles team weekend um, in June um, where I'm going to learn how to use fast views because it would be quicker. So just push that in, hold it for a few seconds, and then that will hold. Do the same on this side. Hold it in. That's lovely. And then that's going to stick up there. So we're going to put glue along these edges here. Just stick that down. And you've got to try and make sure it's at a 90 degree angle so that your box is not a weird shape. And at this side, I should have put the glue on both these before I started. Which is actually where not using fuse on this is good because it does give you a bit of wigglage time. So what I'm going to do 
things, stick my cards in. So I've got a little bit of a little bit of something in there, so that labels me to make it correct. There we go. Put my hand down there now and hold, and we're good. I went quiet again, didn't I? So sorry. That's because I was concentrating. So that's your box. All done nicely. So I'm going to put the cards in. Um, before I make the belly band. So that's four cards, four envelopes. Stick them in. Nice and snuggly. I've done something a little bit wrong there. There we go. And then what I did for the belly band was I took this and then centered it a bit and then just fold and crease. Fold and crease. Make sure it's straight. Easier. That's what I did. Because I lent it down like that so I knew I was straight. And then if you just crease them a bit against the box. Whilst it's down in place. Then you can take it off and make your creases a bit better. You can use a bone folder, which I will. There we go. And then you can, of course, ink the edges. Now, this was stamped in Mick Macaron, but I'm going to ink the edges in Island Indigo. And there's two reasons for that. One, I think it might look nice. And two, can't find me mint macaroon sponge. I tidied up yesterday, put things away, um, decided to kind of separate what's going out of the catalogue to what's currently in the catalogue. Um, decided what would be a really good place to put me retired stuff, um, of which mint macaroon's gone in that, even though it hasn't quite retired in the organisation. I didn't want to organise again in three weeks. Um, can I remember where I put my retired things? No, I can't. So, uh, yeah, bit of a pain. So, there we go. Just thinking all the way around this. I think it makes a nice contrast. And because I've stamped the sentiment in this, I think it works really nice. So that's that. And I think I'm going to just do a splodge on this as well. So I'll do the splodge in mint macaron because that's what I did it on the outside. So, and I'm going to decide am I going to sponge the edges. So just a splodge. On that, like it. Might just do another little bit of a splodge on the edge there because that hadn't really come out enough. There, like that. And then I think I might just make that edge a little bit. And then that's that out nicely. Like it, like it, like it. So, to stick the belly band on, 
I'm going to put the I'm going to put the uh, bit where it meets at the front because that's going to get covered by the circle and the belly band and the sentiment rather. So a bit more Tombow along the edge there. Bring it down. So I'll come her again. There we go. Hold it for a bit so that slips nicely. So I am going to. I used some dimensionals um, on on it. So I want to. One at the top, and one at the bottom, so I know they're going to go, and then I might just go slightly there and slightly there. Don't want to go too far out because otherwise it will stick on the box, and we don't want that. There we go. that on there and then I'm going to put the sentiment across there which I am going to just use a bit of snail for that and stick that on there nicely centered so there you have it so I think that's quite cute so that's the alternative color which I do find it actually only goes on one way took on the other way for some bizarre reason so yeah that's me that's me two alternatives okay so all the measurements will be on my blog um, and um, I think they make cute gifts and if you do craft fairs you can of course um, sell them so I like them hope you do too all right pop over to me bog have a little look and um, see you again soon